This video is the election of 1860. This is the last video inside the Division of States era. And um, in order for us to understand the, how the election of 1860 is going to come about and the outcome of it, we have to understand the background information of what's going on. So just a quick recap of the how the tensions are high between the states. It's going to be, the first thing is going to be pretty um, high tension is going to be the John Brown raid and what he's going to stand for and how that's going to affect each region kind of differently. Um, remember, John Brown was seen as a mortar, or not a mortar, gosh almighty, that's a bomb, um, a martyr in the North where he's going to die for a great cause and he's going to be seen as a terrorist in the South. And that shows a very different divide in um, the United States and how we're going to handle it. Kansas, bloody Kansas or bleeding Kansas is going to radicalize slavery. So people are going to get violent because of it now, which John Brown was a huge part of. The Dred Scott decision, that's going to make slaves property instead of citizens. And so they can't get any rights to be free. The North is not going to like this very much. The fugitive slave laws, which are going to force the North to actually recognize slavery and um, support it because they have to bring the people, they have to let the bounty hunters in to get the slaves, and states' rights versus federal, federal power. As of right now in history, Congress is going to pass resolutions that say the Constitution prohibits Congress from interfering with slavery with states where states have already established the Institute of Slavery, and they can't do anything about it. So this is the kind of the climate that we're having right now for the in election of 1860. A lot of things that make the South mad and a lot of things that make the North mad. And so this is not a happy election. Um, specifically in the Democrats, the poor Democrats, they are just a hot mess. So we need the players in the game here. The Democrats are going to be basically, a, like I said earlier, a hot mess where they're going to have to split because they can't decide, they can't agree on who they need, who they want to run as their Democratic candidate. So the Northern Democrats, they're going to, they're going to elect um, Stephen Douglas. And Stephen Douglas' stance is going to be popular sovereignty. States need to decide if they like slavery or not. The Southern Democrats, they are going to like a man named John Breckinridge. Because, now why they couldn't, oops, there's a D in there. Why they couldn't agree is because Stephen Douglas wasn't completely pro-slavery. He just was a pro-sovereignty um, guy where states can decide, whereas John Breckinridge, he wants to uh, protect slavery. So, of course, the South Southern Democrats like the guy who wants to protect slavery. Um, a random new party, the Constitutional Party, Constitutional Union Party, they're going to come out with a guy named John Bell, no relation to the Taco Bell, and he is going to, now the Constitutional Union Party's stance is going to uphold the Constitution as it is, which means slavery. The Constitution includes slavery, they want to add it. And finally, if I can squeeze it down here, sorry, it's such a mess. The Republican Party, they are going to choose Abraham Lincoln. Now, they like Abraham Lincoln because he was a great speaker. He can um, appeal to the immigrants, which will give a lot of votes to those. And um, they're going to take the free soiler approach where they want to stop the spread of slavery west. Once again, they do not say to get rid of slavery. They just want to stop it going west. Keep it where it is. They want to keep it where it is, just need to stop it spreading west. Now, the result is going to be that um, as people are voting in the south, Lincoln's name was not even on the ballot. So um, he's going to, nine states are not going to have Lincoln's name in the ballot. So he's not even an option when you go and vote. So the, the outcome is going to be is that Lincoln is going to win, wins the election in 1860, um, and that's without that's without nine states voting for him. 
his name wasn't even on the ballot. And so when you don't have nine states voting for you, you should not win. But the problem is, is he's going to win 40% of the popular vote in very large states. Now, if you remember the Electoral College, like if your state's pretty large, you have a large number for electoral votes. And so he is going to win the Electoral College. which will put him at his presidency. As soon as he becomes presidency, um, the South, the South's reaction to this is going to be that they feel, whoops, not fell. They feel like they have absolutely no voice in government because if nine states did not vote for this man and he only had 40% of the popular vote in large states, they don't have a voice because nine states didn't vote for the man and they still he still won. So they have no voice in government is what they feel like. And because of that, South Carolina will be the first ones to secede from the union. Other states will follow very shortly. And the reasons are is that the president... Um, is oops is hostile towards slavery. Um, another reason is that their states' rights will be violated and not uphold. And this was even before he even stepped into office. They are making these assumptions that he's hostile towards slavery, their states' rights are going to be um, violated, and they actually made a, a thought process that's actually going to make sense. They believe that since the federal government under Lincoln will... Um, won't allow slavery to expand, which will lead to all of the states being added to the union are going to be free. When that happens, there will be an upset of power in government, meaning the North is going to get a lot more power in government than the South because no Southern states are going to be added to the union because they're not allowed to spread slavery West. So that's going to upset the balance of power in government, which will lead to Congress eventually voting to abolish slavery, which means that basically equals to protect slavery and their way of life and economy They must leave the union. So in order for all of this to happen, it's going to just be a snowball effect for them. As soon as they, um, Lincoln is a president, he's going to stop the expansion of slavery, which is going to upset the power balance, the balance of power in government, favoring the North. And the North Congress, because all the North Congress is basically the northern states now, the free states, they're going to pass legislation that um, to abolish slavery, which is going to end the South's economy and social life, and that they feel like it's a state right to do that. So in order to protect their economy and their way of life and slavery, they must leave the Union. They're going to um, create the Confederacy States of America. And that's the election of 1860, when Lincoln wins without one single vote from the nine states in the South. South is going to secede from the Union, and the Civil War will begin shortly after that.